Hello, this is a video to show you the differences between Dyn Topo and Multi Resolution Modifier for sculpting. I'm going to go through the differences between the two and when you can combine them together for a great sculpting workflow. This will become just a small part of many tutorial videos which are available on gabbit.co.uk, links in the description. And there's many other videos on learning Blender from beginner right through to advanced. Okay, so I've got my default cube. I'll get rid of the light and camera for now. And I'll subdivide this cube by pressing Control 4. So I've subdivided it. So I've got a subdivision surface modifier. That's the shortcut. Control 2, 3, or 4 will add the different subdivisions. And I'll apply that. So now I've just got my subdivided cube, but it's nicely in a sphere. I'm going to duplicate that so we can see the differences between the two. One, I'm going to use a multi resolution modifier, and one, I'm going to use Dyn Topo. So we'll start with Dyn Topo. So this one to sculpt mode, and we'll enable Dyn Topo. And I'll just reduce the detail size and start painting. Okay, and if I go to wireframe now, you can see it's adding mesh, but it has turned it all into triangles. So that's the major difference is that this is creating new topology with the Dyn Topo. And if I go across the other side now, add the multi resolution modifier, subdivide it a few times, and then go to sculpt mode. And now you can see I'm drawing on this, but if I go to wireframe, actually I'll reduce those levels of detail. You can see that it's not added any new topology as opposed to the Dyn Topo here. So when do we use them within the sculpting workflow and how can we get the most out of them? Well, let's go back to my Dyn Topo over here into sculpt mode, back into solid mode so I can see what I'm doing. Now, the great thing about this, I'm going to bring my detail down and even lower. You can create loads of topology and it will completely re-edit your shape. Whereas if I try and do this, a similar thing over on the other sphere and I keep stretching it out like this, you can see the detail level is lowering and you can see the topology is just stretching out. So the point being, if you want a starting point and then you can be really free with the way you sculpt and create objects and you can use things like the snake hook tool to pull out topology all over the place. There's a real freedom in the Dyn Topo, whereas there's not as much freedom in the multi-resolution modifier. So you may be asking why on earth would you use the multi-resolution modifier? Well, if we go back into wireframe mode, you can see this is not particularly good topology and there's loads of vertices in here. So this will be very difficult when it comes to unwrapping and painting or animation. But there's one other important point is that it's not very good at the minor details. I'll show you what I mean with that. So back to solid mode. Let's go across to our multi-resolution modifier and I'll bring the sculpt resolution back up and I'll subdivide a couple more times. So now if I want to paint with a detailed brush, let's go back to the draw brush and add some sort of texture to this. So I'll add a new texture, just come across to my textures and let's just quickly grab a brush. Let's grab a rock brush like this and I'm going to change the stroke method to anchored. So when I pull it out, you can see this nice rock shape here, which is pretty good. I could go one higher as well, let's subdivide again, just smooth that out a bit. Let's go to a different spot. Alt F will center in a certain location. And there we go, got a nice rock formation there and I can make lots of sort of nice rocky looking things with different brushes and that looks great. Let's try it on the Dyn Topo. So I'll bring the detail level down so it gives me a nice lot of detail. And then I click and drag and it really struggles to do it. Let's bring the detail even lower and it's still really struggling. So it really struggles to create mesh with one of these brushes. So what you can do with the Dyn Topo if you still want that freedom is go to constant detail and it's kind of the reverse with constant detail you have to push the detail up then you have to in fact i'm not going to go quite that far because my graphics card can't handle it and then you do a detailed flood fill and then turn Dyn topo off and now let's try it it's doing a better job as you can see but it's still because i haven't got enough resolution it's still struggling so that's when you would want to use the multi-resolution modifier so we've got the freedom of being able to sculpt whatever we want with the Dyn Topo, but we've got the ability to sculpt details with the multi-resolution modifier. The other thing you have with Dyn Topo is I can use a Boolean. So if I add, let's say, an icosphere, which is all the way over there, let's uh, subdivide that and just apply that, bring it in, 
and add it to my object. It's struggling at the moment, so I'm going to reduce the detail. So I'm going to change the resolution to 30 and just do a detail flood fill. And let's do a Boolean. I have bool tools as an add-on. You just go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and then type in Bool Tools. And then you've got this, and I can just create a union here, which is great. So I can build up shapes really quickly, uh, build up a mesh really quickly, and then I can go in, uh, Sculpt, I'll take off the brush, of course, with the Dyn Topo, and create lots of new topology quite easily. So it's got so much freedom, you can use Boolean tools and add shapes together. So you can do arms and legs quite easily, or creatures tails and things like that, which is very advantageous. If you try doing that with a snake hook, let's try and create an arm coming out the side here. You can see it's, it's not got the same control, so you'd want to model it first and then Boolean it on. You can't do that with the multi-resolution modifier. So how do we get them to work together? Well, the best way seems to be to start off with a Dyn Topo. So you've got the freedom of creating shapes, adding objects with Boolean, but don't go too far with the detail. Then you have to retopologize or add a relatively low constant detail, which I'll do to this now. So I'll detail flood fill with a constant detail. And let's just see what that's like. Still relatively high detail. So if I turn Dyn Topo off now, go back to object mode, and then add a multi-resolution modifier to this and subdivide it. I only need to subdivide it once because it's already a high detailed mesh. Let's go back into sculpt mode to our draw brush, get that texture back, change the stroke method back to anchor. And there you can see I'm able to add more detail. Let's subdivide it once more and see how that looks over here. And you get the idea it's kind of working. It's not a great approach, this one. What you should do, get rid of this, is retopologize, which means you have to go over all your mesh, painting on new topology. You can get plugins for this, like Instant Mesh. I'll put a card in the corner for a link to that. And once you've done this, then you go across to your multi-resolution modifier and you start doing the more detailed work. So the multi-resolution modifier, in my opinion, should be kept for this minor detailed work like this. So the workflow is Dyn Topo, do all your booleans, get your basic shape, you can go relatively detailed in terms of horns or spikes or whatever they might be, retopologize, then go across to the multi-resolution modifier for your finer details such as these. So hopefully that rounds up the differences between Dyn Topo and multi-resolution modifier and when to use which. I'd love to hear your feedback on these videos and do remember to go to my website to check out courses from beginner to advanced. Links in the description. Thanks for watching.